Yo, what is good people? My name is Dominic, but they call me Vodzu. And every day I'm making beats in Reaper. So I've decided to discuss seven pros and seven cons of making beats in Reaper. I've been using Reaper as my only music production tool since around 2016. Before then I was using Cubase. I was trying to use Studio One by Prisonus and uh, FL Studio. I also know Ableton pretty well. And after using all of those DAWs, which are really good pieces of software, really good DAWs, I've decided to stick to Reaper. Okay, let's start with the 7 pros. Number one is definitely the price. I think Reaper is the cheapest solution on the market as far as fully functional DAW is concerned. The discounted license costs only 60 bucks, 60 American dollars and uh, a commercial license costs 225. The only difference between those two is that the discounted license allows you to earn up to 20,000 USD dollars a year with this license. So if you are a full-time musician and you are earning more than 20,000 USD dollars a year uh, from your music, uh, then uh, the commercial license is for you. And a really nice thing uh, from the creators of Reaper is that until the end of March 2021, uh, there is a temporary license where you don't have to buy any license uh, unless you are working from home. The only thing you have to do is to wear a mask. That's what they are saying on the website at least. Number two is the themes and customization. You can rearrange the DAW in the way you want and you can change the whole look of Reaper by just one click. This is the default look of Reaper. It doesn't look really convincing. That's why I'm using another theme which is called iLogic. That way my Reaper looks a little bit more like Logic. It's mostly blue and gray and it looks fantastic for me. There are a bunch of other themes like Pro Tools. There are of course lots of themes. By default the transport bar is at the bottom but in iLogic uh, you get a configuration file which lets you put this bar here at the top. It also pulls out some cool features. Third thing, Reaper has a great drag and drop kind of workflow. Not only in terms of sounds and samples, but also sending sounds to another track, to another plugin, anything. For example, here I have a basic compressor which is built in into Reaper on my bass bus. And I want to make a side chain. What I have to do is I just drag and drop the kick onto the plugin itself and bang, it works. You can route the signals anywhere in any way you like. You want to send your snare to the reverb bus? No problem, drag and drop it and it's sending. You want another reverb? No problem, just throw it into another reverb and it's just working and here you can control the amount of the reverb. And the coolest thing is that you can make more channels and send the audio without hearing the audio on the other channel. This means you can control a variety of things uh, with the same track. You don't have to copy it or anything. You can send the same snare uh, to some other outputs, make even more pairs of outputs uh, and then control some other parameters in other plugins using this only snare. Dropping samples into the project, no problem. There is a media explorer. You can just drag and drop everything you need. Uh, you can organize your samples into folders and you can easily browse them here. The next thing is the user community and it's absolutely awesome. Honestly, I haven't seen that kind of will to help in any DAW community ever. I don't know why, but people that are using Reaper are in most of the cases really helpful people. There is a growing Reaper subreddit where you can always seek for help and find some useful stuff. Okay, but the community is not only the support and that's where things start to get crazy. There is a thing called Rescript which lets you program your own uh, add-ons, your own scripts uh, for Reaper. A guy named Christian created Reaper Repack, which is a package manager for Reaper. It lets you install all of those add-ons, including scripts, uh, some additional effects, extensions, themes, language packs, everything. One of the coolest scripts I'm using is Align Takes, which lets you align the takes. Here I have two vocals, which are really similar, but they are different takes, and I want to use both of them. This plugin lets me align the vocals more perfect, so if there are some minor misalignments, they will get corrected. There are always some words that are recorded a little bit too fast, a little bit too slow, so this helps a lot. The next thing is that Reaper has no track types. There is no MIDI track, there is no audio track, there is no video track or aux track, there is just a track. And you may be thinking, that is stupid. I was a little bit confused at the very beginning too, but now I don't have to bother myself what is what. I just make a track and I can put everything on it. For example, I can put an audio here and I can insert a MIDI item here. So I can just write something in here. So by default, this track can process audio and can play MIDI and those items can be on the same track. What else? There is no such thing like a group track. Every track can be a group track. You can group tracks in any way you like. 
there is up to, I don't really know, 64 uh, groups or something, I don't re really remember. But you definitely won't lack the amount of groups you could make. The only type of a track, let's say, if we are speaking about types of tracks, is the automation. But it's just the automation lane which is under uh, a particular track. The same goes to panning, any parameter you like. The next thing is that Reaper has all the mixing plugins you would think of. Not only the basic EQ and a compressor and some other basic plugins, but literally Reaper has lots of cool stuff. Let me show you. So for example, you have compressors, gates, oscilloscopes, frequency spectrum analyzers, multiband compression, a reefer plugin that lets you clean something out of noise, some more specified compressors, choruses, deessers, delays, some other delays, exciters, graphical wave shapers, more choruses, speech shifters, transient controls, ring modulators, and many, many more. Of course, you won't need all of these if you are making just beats, but there's lots of plugins as far as mixing, mastering, and shaping the sound is concerned. And it also has a great sampler you can use for your drum samples, etc. The last thing from the pros is the MIDI editor. Some people claim it's not the best, but I don't really think it's really bad. For me, it's actually pretty good. Not as good as in FL Studio, for example, but completely usable and it's got a great workflow. Okay, so here I created the new MIDI item. Here I can change the note resolution, so I can select between quarter notes, eighth notes, sixteenth notes, etc. I can select between straight notes, triplets, dotted notes, swing, so I can make a swing like boom bop type of beat. Uh, using the swing algorithm. Of course, there is quantize, which lets you quantize the notes to uh, any value you like. There is also humanize, which lets you humanize the notes so they are a little bit off the grid depending on your settings and it sounds just more, a little bit more natural. The next great feature is the key snap, which lets you snap your notes to any scale you select. Here are some basic scales, but you can load some more scales. Uh, I'll choose harmonic minor and then all these sounds I'm going to uh, draw here are, go are being snapped to this particular scale. I have also installed a custom script which lets me insert chords, for example minor chords, minor uh, 7, B9, let's say, or some other chords, insert chord like minor and 11. You know, if you don't know any music theory, it helps a lot, you can discover some cool chords uh, and maybe learn some music theory out of those chords that are included in this script. If you'd like to get this script, please go here. Here is a video where I explained how to install uh, more chords. After all, the MIDI editor is pretty easy to use. It has lots of features. Uh, here you can change the velocity. It just works as it should. And now the dark side of the moon cons of making beats in Reaper. Reaper has no VST instruments besides the one Resynth uh, which is included, but it's really really simple and you will definitely want something more. For the beginners I always recommend getting some cheap plugins for air music technology, for example Xpand 2, Hybrid, Mini Grand for pianos. They are often discounted a lot, especially on this website pluginboutique.com and in my opinion they are a great start uh, for a beginner beatmaker. The second thing is that Reaper is not a usual DAW for making beats. Even though I think it's a great option, there is no like a huge knowledge base about making beats in Reaper. That's why I'm making my videos. You can check out my tutorials for making beats in Reaper somewhere above me right now. The third thing is that the default theme doesn't look really convincing, at least for me. Please do not take this personally, I don't mean it's absolutely bad, I just personally don't find it really responsive, I don't like using it. The theme that I'm using, which is iLogic V 2.65, is much more transparent and much more uh, convincing for me. But after all, this is just a theme and it's a matter of personal choice. There is a huge selection of themes on Reaper.fm. The next thing is that you have to adapt to the amount of options and things you have in Reaper. It's not necessarily a disadvantage, but the whole menu is just huge and you have to learn all of those options. I mean, it can scare you off when you are a beginner, but there is nothing complicated going on here. And also Reaper is a kind of DAW you have to personalize a little bit uh, to the things you're going to do in Reaper, since it's a really, really universal tool. It's not meant to any kind of a specialized music production, it's just a DAW, just a great DAW. I mean, when you are thinking about FL Studio or Ableton, you're immediately thinking about more kind of an electronic music. When you are thinking about Pro Tools, Cubase, 
that kind of uh, the AWs to think more about recording studios. But for me, Reaper has great capabilities for both fields. The next thing is that the default plugins don't really look appealing. I mean, all of those look really old school, a little bit like Windows 98 or something. All of those plugins are really great sounding plugins, compressors, equalizers. But the way the plugins look is sometimes important for some people. So that can be an issue. And the last thing I want to mention is the pan in the MIDI editor, like in FL Studio which is not present in Reaper. You can modify the velocity here, but there is no possibility of panning a single note in Reaper in the MIDI editor. You can do it using automation, like on an automation curve, but it's just a little different than, you, than using uh, the MIDI editor. It's not a big deal, but I just like this feature in FL Studio, especially when writing hi-hat rolls that go from the right to left and uh, that kind of things. That's all. I hope you liked this video. If you'd like to hear more about Reaper and music production in general, some techniques, please feel free to subscribe to the channel and hit the like button under this video. If you want to help me grow this channel, you can share this video. It helps a lot, uh, not only in terms of, yeah, I get a share, but it brings a few more people into the community I'm creating. And most importantly, what do you think about Reaper? If you are starting to make beats, would you use it as your main DNW? I would love to hear your thoughts in the comment section down below. So that's everything. See you in the other videos on Wednesdays and Fridays. My name is Dominic. You've been watching Vodzu Beats and keep the good vibes alive.